Hi, everybody. Welcome. So this is a class for making shabby chic flowers. And we're we'll probably using these flowers throughout in different uh, kits. And I'm making this tutorial separately so that you can have it available. So first of all that I want to do is let you know what I do. And when I'm doing the uh, flowers, I just take an afternoon or take a few hours. And I just do one session where I just sit around and make flowers. So what do I do? Um, first thing that you're going to need is a bunch of uh, scraps, you know? And I do offer those for sale. Uh, they will come in packs of 12, 24, et cetera. So then it's not going to be expensive. And these have been collected for many, many years from a lot of different types of paper and collections that I have. So uh, you will get a bunch of them, uh, different patterns, and they will have uh, some papers that are double sided. Some papers will be just one side. Some will be light paper. Some will be hard cardstock. Some have glitter or foil or some kind of texture on it. Okay, so it's just you know, a, a whole bunch of remnants that I have, like this one have glitter in on it. Um, and that's what I use for making flowers. Okay. Um, uh, if you're making, let's say, uh, to make three flowers, you're going to need three of these. So you pick colors that might go together you know, like that. And then you cut small, medium, and large flowers out of each card and put them together. So this will give you three flowers. Okay. I wanna show you what the outcome is uh, from today's session. So this is the result that you will get. And I will bring it closer. So these are not done yet. I still have to do the center of them. But during my session, I just put, I prepared the flowers and I put them all together. Okay. So this will be enough for me to make quite a few cards. On the cards that I'll be making today, each one will have two, one or two flowers. So there's plenty here. Okay, so that's one thing. Second is, how do you get the flower shape? So I will have a download of a PDF sheet that you have a whole bunch of different flower shapes that and sizes that you can use. You can go ahead and print it out and just use a carbon paper or you can cut them out and trace it. You know, this will be a good guide for you to use on the papers. Okay. Or you can do it freehand. It's perfectly okay to do freehand. You know, in let's say you're making uh, flowers that are about one inch. So you divide the page, find your center. Okay. And then you can do flowers that are just making some ellipticals. You just make the ellipticals all the way around. And it doesn't really have to match. Okay. You can do flowers that have pointed petals. You can make flowers that have hearts. So you just put a heart and another heart and another heart. OK, 
Okay. Or you can do flowers that let's say have uh, triangles. So do like a triangle. What you don't want when you're cutting them is to go too close here. You do want it to be a little bit of a bigger circle when you cut it so that it'll have a nice base. Okay. When you finish this, you take your scissors. And you go ahead and you cut it. So this is a medium size for the flower and you can do identical one as you take a different kind of paper. Let's say you take this one. Now you want to do the same thing, the bigger ones. So you select yourself a bigger space. And you make just bigger hearts. Go ahead and cut a whole bunch of those. And then you need to cut them... Um, yeah, after, after you uh, cut them all up, what I do is I ink all the edges, okay? And if you have the background here, that's that's okay. It's, it's not a problem. You know, try to cover it up. And I usually use a brown because it makes it look a little bit more shabby. And then you have one. Okay. For each flower, we'll need three. An alternative to cutting those by hand, and I'm sure you all already thought about that. Why isn't she using a die? <laughs> well, I certainly do, and I keep my flower dies in a separate little box in different sizes. So I have all sorts of dice here. And I do use them and when I go ahead and do a session, I cut a whole bunch of them. So that I will have a lot of selection. Um, I don't know why I can't fit it in now. Okay. So here is an example of three that I've cut. In, from different papers. So this one was double-sided paper and uh, you know, you can choose either one to use. This one was white and I put already some of the dye on it. And this again was double-sided. Okay. When you finish doing that, you can go ahead and ink all of the edges And you can use brown if you want it to be vintagey, or you can use colored uh, ink. What I wouldn't use is the distress ink because the next step you're going to spray with water. So if you have it distressed, the the ink will disappear or you know smudge. You want something permanent. that will not uh, disappear when you are doing the next step. 
Ashley, all my fingers are really brown from early. I tried to wash it as best I could. But I think they're still a little bit brown. Okay. So this is what we'll get. We'll get three that we can assemble one on top of the other. Now three is the minimum, I think, or you, if you're doing a small flower, you can do it too, but you can definitely do more if you want and it'll be very full flower. So what I've done is I put it in this little tray right here, okay, according to sizes. And I have a whole bunch already made. See? A whole bunch from all sorts of leftover paper. And I s divided them uh, not according to shape, but more according to size. Okay, so the next step. Is I'm taking a little mat here. This is the little mat that I got, I think, at the dollar store, or maybe I got it at uh, Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure. It's just plastic. It's one of those that you use when you eat, you know. I'm putting paper towel on, on it. And what you want to do is you want to just take the pieces that you have cut and inked already. And so I'm going to put the ones I just did here so that you can see them in action. Okay. So these are the three that I showed you, right? So let's take these. And actually what I do, if I make a really a lot, a lot, a lot of them, I have a table here in my studio that I just clear out and I put towels all over my table and I work on it that way. Okay, so this is basically what you do. You spread them around. Like that. Okay. Then you fill up your spray bottle with water. And this is optional, but you can also put a little bit, a few drops of glycerin on it. And what the glycerin does, it softens the, it, it makes it much softer and easier to use. So just really a few drops of glycerin. You don't need a lot. Shake it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and spray everything with water you don't need to go overboard a couple of spritz on it is good enough but you're saturating the paper with some water. And you can take more paper towel and try to absorb the excess water that you have. Okay. 
All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, choose your area where you want it to be on the top. Okay. And start folding this a little bit. And that's it. And I'm, I'm just folding them like that. You can twist it a little bit if you want. Just be very gentle because right now it's very easily, it can very easily rip. The small ones especially. Okay, we're going to do a whole bunch like that. Okay. And when that's done, I'm going to leave it here to dry. You can, if you like, open them now after you crinkled it and let it dry open. But you have to be very careful not to destroy it. Okay. Another thing that you can do is you can take a little bit of an embossing tool with a little, it has a little metal ball here. You can hold it. There are special sponges that are soft that you can use to emboss it. And if you don't have one, you can just use your hand, hold it in the palm of your hand and just emboss it here a little bit. So it gets this shape. And just leave it like that. Once it dries, it'll keep that shape more or less. Okay. Another thing that you can do is actually after the flower is done, you can dip it in polyurethane and that will stiffen it. But right now, it's very soft. It's still a little wet. Okay. But what you get is you get, it's not flat anymore. It is now dimensional. And we're just going to do a whole bunch of them. Okay. After that's done, you can uh, let it dry, leave it alone. If you're living in Florida like I do and it's a hot day and you don't have the AC going, it'll dry within 30 minutes. <laughs> so it really depends where you are and how hot it is where you are. Um, it can take a few hours or it can take less than an hour. I did try once successfully. I put it in the oven on very, very, very low temperature. Be careful because it's, it is paper after all, but I put it in a metal pen, of course, not paper. I put it in a metal pen, pen and on very, very low heat, you know, just warm, and it dried it up pretty nicely. But you have to watch it so that it isn't, it doesn't touch anything, any of the heat elements there, that it doesn't fly when you take it out, you know, because it is a fire hazard. So I don't always recommend it. You can use your heat tool to heat it up faster, obviously. And let's see if we can do this now. It'll help if I plug it. Okay. So the heat tool, unlike uh, 
a hair dryer. It does not blow air. It just blow heat. But you still have to be a little careful with it. Because then you're gonna it's gonna fly all over the place. Okay, so you'll do that. Okay. And what you're gonna get is you're gonna get the paper petals. Now they're a little crinkly. Look how pretty this is. I think it looks really pretty. And you assemble them together. Take a glue. You put it one on top of the other and use the glue. And you'll get the flower. How cute this is. This and this and uh, I'm gonna see if I have anything here. Yes, like that. All right, so very fast I get my flowers. So let's put these aside. And when I do a, a flower session, you see I, I just have a whole bunch here ready for me that I can just open and use. Okay. Now for the centers. I'm going to bring back the flowers that I've already done. And the centers can be also fun. Okay. So you can do it with white, you can do it with uh, whatever you like. So, but you know, if, if I do it with white, it brings a lot of, uh, a lot of it out. So what do I do? No. I take white cardstock. You can certainly use remnants that you have. And I take different kind of punches that have interesting things in the center and I will show you a few. Okay. So the simplest one is a circle. Let's go ahead and see if I can find my punch. Yeah, there it is. So I have a couple of small punches. Okay. This one is a half an inch. This one is a, is a quarter inch. So let's, for example, take this one that's a half inch 
and put it right here in the middle and press. Okay. And then I take my black marker, little thing, and I can make little dots. It's kind of cute. Okay. I also have punches that have flowers on it. So we can do this one. And if you want, you can, of course, take your little ink and ink it. So now if you want to ink it with this dress with the different colors, you can because you're not, you're not going to put water on it again. Like that. Okay. You can go even further and put, let's say, a little sparkle on it. And in the kit, I will give you some rhinestones, okay? And these rhinestones are crystal. They're really pretty. They maintain their shine. They're not the plasticky ones. Crystal or glass. They might be glass. I don't know, but they're not plastic. I tell you that. Oh, we have... Little sparkle, sparkle there. I don't know if you can see. Okay. So we can do that. Another thing that you can do is you can put glitter on it. You know, take your art glitter glue. So we have some glitter in the center and you can also put some glitter around the edges if you like. If you want to go that route. So I put some glue on here. You can just dip it. And you got a little glittery. So that's another way to spice it up. You can emboss it. You know, we can emboss it with the heat. Let's see if we can. You know what, I don't want to emboss it now, but um, you know, if you know how to emboss, you just put some ink around, some embossing powder, you heat it up and you'll get that embossing effect. You can do it in the center and around, however you like. I also like to use these. I picked it up a while ago. And I hope it's still good. So it's a little border maker that make little flowers. And it's very cute. But I take the little flowers out of it. So sometimes, again, when I have time, I just sit with some cardstock, I punch out some flowers, and I have them ready. You can also color them with your marker.
So we have a little floral, floral center. Okay. So this is with white cardstock. The same thing you can do with black cardstock if you have leftover. I have always have some leftover from my project. So here is a strip of black cardstock. Let's do a few. We don't want it to be a little smaller. And so on and so on. Okay. We have little flowers that we can do, little hearts that we can do. Little butterflies. Whatever you want to put in your center. And with a black marker or white marker, you can do some interesting things. Make some lines. Make little circles. Or if you don't have any punch, you can just take your marker and just paint a circle inside. You can do whatever you like. Okay. This with the white.
Okay, so these are my flowers. And um, you can go ahead, make a whole bunch, have fun. Look how cute they are. And this is what we'll be using on our card. Okay. So I will see you in the next tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Have fun. Mm-hmm.